Hey all, it's Elisa from Photobox Designs. I'm here today to show you how to make one of those trending cardboard box, uh, inside the box photo collages. So here we go. Um, and this will be done in Canva. So Canva is a great tool. The first thing you want to do is open it up and go to create a design. Um, I, you can choose all kinds of different ones. I'm using an educational platform, but you may be in Canva Pro or Canva free, so it may look different for you. I'm just going to go to custom design and I'm going to design this one. Um, I, I, I like to go with inches. You could do it with pixels. I'm going to do it at, like, let's just say 15 by 15 inches. I'll make a, we're going to make a square. Um, and, the, and press create, create new design. And so what we're going to want to do is because we're adding in photos that are a cardboard box looking I'm going to go into my elements over here I'm gonna search elements and I'm gonna search up cardboard and there are plenty of cardboard boxes that you can look at and find the one that you like the best um, you can look here I, I sometimes I prefer this one sometimes I prefer this one I'll just go with this one for now I'm gonna go to these three little dots here and I'm gonna select save images background this will give me my background of my photos. If the color doesn't match perfectly, I will adjust that later once I bring my photos in. So now, next thing I'm gonna, going to do is go to Uploads. And um, I already have some photos in here in that I'm going to use, but I'm gonna just show you quickly how you upload. So you just click Upload Files, and then you can go to your, uh, wherever it is that you get your photos. Um, usually my photos, because I took them in my iPhone, they'll be located here in the photos app and you will go into the photos. This is this directly syncs with my phone. So um, and you can go and you can find the photos that you want and you can just upload pictures like such. All right. And once you've uploaded your photos, but I do want to say that I will often crop my photos in my phone before I upload them to Canva. Uh, I do that mostly because it's just easier if my photo is a perfect square um, or a rectangle and I don't need any kind of warping. Um, I do that uh, because it's just easier and then I select out the photos that I've already cropped and then I'm able to just kind of pop them into the temp into the uh, into the Canva template. But um, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go back and I'll pick other pictures and they aren't cropped and that's fine too. So I'm going to pick a couple of photos here. I'll show you one that I've already cropped and one that I haven't. These are all squares. I'm just going to pop a couple of them in here. Here's one. This is from a little photo shoot I did with friends, my best friend's family, and they were so kind to let us, um, to let me borrow them. We had so much fun. So I'm going to just pop in some pictures. Now, one of the downfalls I want to tell you is that if you, if you know uh, me, if you're part of my Facebook group inside the photo box, photography and Photoshop, um, we've been doing photo boxes before this DIY trend uh, started about seven years ago, six or seven years ago already. And we usually shoot inside a white box. Um, I even shot in a cardboard box a couple of years ago and, and I have video of it. This year it has taken off on TikTok and Instagram and you know it is very much so DIY. And so you may be listening to this tutorial, watching this tutorial, and you're not a photographer and that's totally fine. That's the whole point of it. But one of the benefits of using Photoshop over Canva is that there are more tools if you don't get your box perfectly square. So there are things like warping tools that I love and we don't really have the access to it here in Canva. So if you look at this photo here, this bugs me a little bit because it wasn't like a perfectly square photo and I can't really warp it in the same way. But you know, this is DIY. We're going for some fun. We're not going for perfection and um, this little part right there. If I was in Photoshop, I would warp this photo. I would grab this edge and pull it out so that this box was completely aligned. Or I, there's lots of other tools that you can do in Photoshop. But um, like I said, this is more of the DIY and you, we're not looking for absolute perfection. So I've got two pictures here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pick one here that is not cropped yet and it is a little wonky and it has an overhang and I'm picking that on purpose. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to actually just crop it up, but I'm not going to crop it all the way to the edge of the box. I'm going to just go to this right there. I'm going to um, turn it a little bit. Let's see, click 
down here. I'm going to just sort of turn my box a little so I get it more square and just bring it up, you know, and if it cut off the edge of the box, it's fine. Now I'm making it more of a square box and I can keep turning it and um, there we go. And there we go. And, but leave that here. So now you've really just kind of cut off some of the edges and it, it's still fine. And the next thing I'm going to do is bring in one more picture. Actually, I think this picture was a little bit too high for this. I think I had another one I liked better. Yes, this one. This is another one that is also not cropped, so I'm just gonna crop it now. Like I said, you can do it either way. It's really not a big deal to crop it. If I'm doing it on my phone, which by the way, you can absolutely do this in your phone or your iPad, you know, it's a little bit more tedious and the cropping is a little more tedious and that's why I like to crop it in my iPhone. But when you're working with a computer, you have so much, I find it to be so much easier to do anything in a computer when it comes to editing. But for convenience, we do a lot in our phones these days. So I'm just gonna sort of make this guy into a square here as much as possible. And I just kind of rotate it a little bit to make it straighter. Okay, so my image here is going to be one, two, three, uh, he's looking up. So I want I want him to be on the bottom, three, four. I'm going to now pull this out so that they are aligned with each other. Truthfully, I could just go like this, bring that down, and that kind of crops out that issue that I've had. And now I have a four. You know, it, it actually that worked fine. Um, and so I'm going to make sure that this picture matches this picture. And usually, Canva's really good about like showing you if you're like pretty much. You see how there's a purple line that kind of comes. It shows you how where your alignment is. I really like that does make it much easier and I'm just going to align the bottom of this picture together and kind of make it smaller so that it that the right side aligns with this right side um, so that I know that when I crop this picture which I will it's going to be the same um, size so when we shot this picture we did it purposely he was holding this uh, champagne bottle and I when I took the photograph I marked where his champagne bottle was at the bottom of the box so that when she went in there and she was holding up her glass, I, I had her kind of hold up her glass so that it would uh, be in the same spot but above. So the marking for the bottle was on the bottom of the box and then when she went in, we marked the top of the box directly above where the bottom of the box marking was for her glass. So that way we can align it together in Photoshop. I'm not, sorry, in Canva, we're working in Canva today. All right, so now this is a um, this is really good. I'm still there's one more piece I'm going to show you here, which is how to get this cutout to work. But uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight one of the photos. I'm going to press down the Shift button, and I'm going to click on all my boxes. All right, or there's another little, um, and I'm going to group them like that. So now that they're all moving in together in one group, um, I'm going to ungroup them and show you another little trick. So if you click on one button and then you press Command A, I'm on a Mac. It might be Control A on a computer on a PC, and then it does the same thing. But that will that will uh, select everything on your canvas. And there are times you don't want to select everything. Uh, let me show you one more thing. Sometimes you will want to um, uh, change your layers around. So you see how this layer is under this layer, but you want to see where all the layers are. So you click on a, on a box and you go to more and you go to layers and then <clears throat> you can do this. You can bring your layer forward such as like that or you can see where all your, you can always go bring it backwards, bring it to the back. You can also go to this little handy show layers. This is probably one of the most important features that uh, a lot of people don't know about and this is your layers panel, very similar to Photoshop and this layers panel, what you can do is you can move your layers around and this is really important. So you could see that this is the top layer in the entire project. Let's say you want to drag it under. Now you're dragging it underneath. So now this layer, which is highlighted over here, is the top layer. It's on top of everything. There is nothing on top of it. Then this is the next layer, then this one, then this one. There'll be times when you need to click on a layer and you can't get to it because in the layers panel it is on the bottom and it's being covered by bigger items. 
And I used to find that very frustrating until I discovered where this layers panel is. So if if you're watching this tutorial and you never do a box photo shoot, but you want to learn more about Canva, this is probably one of the best tips I could give you is the layers panel. So, all right, going back to this photo, what I want to do is I'm clicking on it. This is the one with the lady with the, um, so she has the, uh, the um, wine glass. And I'm going to click this thing called duplicate. And now I've duplicated this photo, right? You could see where it is in my layers panel. It's on the very top. It's above everything, which is fine, which is where I want it. And then I'm going to go to background remover. And this is a disclaimer. This will only feature is only available to you if you have Canva Pro. If you do not have Canva Pro, I do not think that this is a um, feature that you can, can do, but there are free uh, background remover sites, websites that you can Google. Uh, just Google in, you know, uh, remove background and then you could take your photo before you bring it into Canva. Um, you can go to one of those free sites, remove the background first and then bring it back into Canva and then use that photo. Um, but you will also want, of course, the photo that has the background because what we're doing is we're taking the one with the background and we're going to remove that background so that way, and hopefully this works, I haven't tested this one out. Um, you see, you can see now that the glass now looks like it is hanging over the, the other box because I've removed out the background. Actually, it didn't, didn't do a good job, let's see. I'm gonna bring this one back up. And that went forward. Yes, it did. It's just that my, my glass has a little bit of a the, the black shadow behind it from the wall, so which is fine. So I'm actually going to go to step backwards, and step backwards. So now you can see that this glass, whoops, this box is underneath, and then the top. Whoop, whoop, see, okay. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. I want to go to this top layer in the layer panel, which is the one I cut out. And I want to make sure that it is directly on top of the layer. So this layer is now directly on top of this layer. I'm actually going to drag this one up just so you can see. So, whoops. so these two layers now are now, whoop, I actually know, I got to bring, yeah. So um, this one is directly on top of the other one. Now I'm going to make sure I'm on the layer that's un- um, that the background is still there and I'm going to now crop that layer down to the edge of the box because we don't care if the wine glass is showing or not anymore. We don't need it to show. I'm going to, and now whatever you do, if you move these pictures around, you have to always remember to move the cropped, I mean the one with the background you have to move that with it. Sometimes, to be honest with you, I do that as the very last step. I don't know why I'm not doing it that way, but hopefully this will make sense. So this photo, I've now cropped it. I'm just going to twist it a little bit, make sure that it fits in here. Okay. Twisting it, just making it look pretty good. You can actually leave some space between your pictures if you want to also and give it like that that look that has like a template feel to it uh, that's like entirely up to you I sometimes I do that sometimes I don't um, so, and then you sort of start to adjust the pictures I'm just moving this little the one the one with the background that I pulled out just moving it around it's just for the sake of just working on the things that are here first and all I'm doing is kind of cropping in so that my edges align with each other. Um, sometimes I just pull from the side, sometimes I pull from the angles to make them smaller. And then I'm going to take this photo and place it back on top. And I'm going to have to twist this one now because it was the one that was cropped out. And so now that one's aligned. Um, the alignment isn't absolutely perfect. Obviously, the photo of his uh, of his um, bottle and her glass are not perfect, but you know, it's cute enough, right? And then I'm going to press Command A and I'm selecting them all and I'm grouping them together. And I'm going to just stretch it out here a little bit, okay? 
so that it gives it the look that I am interested in having. So I'm just gonna kind of like leave a little, a little cardboard border around the edges. You can see, it's hard to tell with this one, but as I move everything around, you can see that there is a, like a purple line that's going perpendicularly and uh, horizontally down and across. That's letting me know I'm perfectly centered, which is wonderful. Um, the background, I'm clicking on the background and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to edit the background. That's that cardboard box. I'm just gonna play around with um, adjusting the color temperature because I think that it needs to be like a little bit more orange to match the actual box that um, the people are in. So I'm just playing around with the color temperature. Maybe I'll play around with tint a little bit so that it gives it more of like that realistic look that they're inside, you know, like a slotted box. And that's really it. Um, that's your whole uh, that's your whole shebang. So then, when you're done with that, you would go to share. And um, one of the most important things is if you're going to print this, something really super important is that when you go to share and you go to download, you're going to check your size. You can download as a PNG or a JPEG. Both of those are good for sharing. They're good for printing. Um, if you're using the free version of Canva, the printing, they don't give you the option to download it with a high, with an extremely high resolution. So printing it, um, you may end up with some fuzzy pictures for the printing. Um, but you can always download it at the highest resolution that they allow you to. And then you can always go to a website where you can upsize your photo so you have more resolution, more pixels. But here I would take this and I would bring this up. So I would, if I'm going to print it, I would bring it up to the highest resolution possible um, so that I would uh, hope that my printing will be clear uh, and that the resolution is high enough for printing. There are websites that you can Google as well. Um, and I'm going to put a link to some websites in uh, the comments here that you can go to for upsizing your photos and also for checking the resolution of your photos. Um, both of those uh, websites would be very useful for you if you're not a Canva Pro user. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, one other thing that I didn't mention that could be fun is you have, you know, an option of using elements and when you're using your elements, you can basically do so much. You can add so much to this. You can, when you're in elements, you'll see you have graphics, you have uh, AI image generators, you have stickers, you have photos. So like, let's say you wanted to, you know, you can also add text to this too, right? So let's say you wanted to add like um, some snow falling and make this more of a movie, right? Oh, should go like this. So I would go here and I can go to graphics and you can see if the graphics are moving, then you know it's like an animated graphic. Um, and maybe you want to put a little bit of snowfall. So we can put uh, this one right here, and then you can turn this into more of a, a video. And you, so you want to have like, some more snow than just that. You can duplicate the snow and move it around. All right, so that could be like a fun little addition to your, uh, to your, to your project. And you can also add in text. Maybe you want to add in like, uh, Merry Christmas. And, you know, if you wanted to make this into a holiday card, you could have sized this as a five by seven, which would have been great. I'm just going to make this text bigger. I don't know why my text is always so teeny tiny, but it is. So, you know, and you can write Merry Christmas and maybe you want to change the color. So maybe you want to make it white or you want to make it bold or uh, you want to go into effects here and you can change up the effects of yours and you can even animate it if you were making it into something that you were going to post you can go into different animations for your text so all of that is really fun and that is all that's my whole my whole tutorial so if you're interested in learning more you can follow uh you can check out our etsy store we have lots and lots of templates that you can use to edit uh not just box photography but also portrait photography regular photography um, I have a YouTube uh, website with more tutorials and I, you can find me with, I've been posting a lot of tutorials lately on 
TikTok and Instagram and all the links will be in the comments. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.